Want to memorize mathematical formulas related to anything in programming, chemistry, physics, you name it? There are just a few memory systems you need. They're fun and easy to develop, and most importantly, if you set aside a couple of afternoons, it doesn't take long to develop them at all. And once you're set up, you're set up with something you can use and improve for life. Now, magnetic warriors of the mind typically don't distinguish formulas from any other kind of information. They just ensure they have the systems needed to succeed with whatever life throws at them. To do this, all we need can be quickly summarized. We need one, a memory palace network, ideally coded to the alphabet. Two, an alphabetical image system, ideally packed with magnetic imagery supercharged by all eight magnetic modes. Three, we need a number system based on either the major or one of its variations. Fourth, we need a symbol system for associations to help you remember things like asterisks, tildes, ampersands, and whatever you need. The more the merrier, and beyond that, the more prepared you'll be for success. And fifth, you need a review system, ideally recall rehearsal, so you're not weakening your perfectly good personal discipline by relegating it to apps. This last point is important because even if you do use spaced repetition apps with any level of success, that is no excuse for not strengthening yourself by reviewing manually from within your mind. The best memory science shows us that it is active recall that you practice generating without assistance that forms memory the quickest, so you are only robbing yourself by using software instead of self-generated recall rehearsal. Now, a warning before we look at an example based on a formula you might need to memorize. A good while ago, I released a video called How to Memorize a Textbook. In this video, I answered a question about memorizing formulas, but as many people have pointed out in the discussion beneath that video, the formula is incorrect. I actually don't know if it's correct or not. I was just answering the question and took it on faith that the person asking me about it knew what he needed to memorize. As a person who studies mostly matters pertaining to philosophy, history, and languages, I do not know if the example I'm about to discuss now is correct or not. And that's beside the point. When you have these tools, you can memorize anything, and it's up to you as the learner to ensure the accuracy of what you're memorizing. So with that caveat in mind, here's the quadratic formula, which I found simply by searching Google for typical math equations. First, I would divide this equation in half so that the monkey mind doesn't start huffing and puffing about how overwhelming the whole thing is. You can even split it into three parts and distribute those parts into three discrete sections of a memory palace. And if you have your systems in place, the memory palace is simple. You'll have one for X ready to go. In my case, I have quite a few options, but I'm gonna go with the movie theater in the Toronto suburb of Scarborough, where I remember going to see the second X-Men film back in the day. Wolverine is a great image for X because he can hold his claws to make an X. He can then shoot those claws so they resemble the equal sign. Now, I'm not a mathematician or someone who needs to memorize formulas, but I'll bet that there are all kinds of letters that will need a plus or minus to them. So when I think about minus B, I'm already thinking about Christian Bale and how he could either be positive or negative. So if it were plus B, I would think of Christian Bale as Batman. Since it's minus B, I'll think of him as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. This is a great association because Bateman is a character who often enough has a knife, which is not unlike the minus sign. He uses the knife to create harm which is also a minus, so it fits. Now, some people are gonna object that Batman also causes harm sometimes, and those people would be right about that. But those people might also be overthinking this process, and if that's the case, just give your Batman the Christian cross to hang on to, and that should solve any issues. I could go on and on, but the long and short of the matter is that if you know the name of a symbol, you can create an association for it. Plus minus, can apparently have all kinds of functions, but the symbol pretty much tells you what it is because plus minus looks like a plus sign over a minus sign. What about this strange check mark for square root? Well, S and R form the beginnings of the two words and that evokes squirrels. If you think about it, the symbol looks something like a squirrel and you can get squirrels interacting with Batman, can't you? And in this way, you can develop associations for each and every symbol and every letter of the alphabet. The major system will give you a means of memorizing numbers and sometimes our community meets for a live seminar called Major System Mastery. If you'd like to be invited to a future session, make sure you've taken my free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT. Having a major system will allow you to create images for each and every number and many people can develop this in a very short period of time. 
After that, it's just practice. You can also use a simpler number image system. For example, in AC forward slash 2A, I would have Al Pacino and Cookie Monster laying a ladder against a giant swan. The ladder looks like the forward slash and swans look a lot like the number two. The rest is just recall rehearsal, which I teach you the basics of in a video called Repetition Rules. Now again, I'm not a mathematician and have no reason to memorize formulas. However, people have thrown them at me more than a few times back when I was doing live streams, and I could memorize whatever they threw at me quickly and with accurate recall for two simple reasons. The first is that I simply don't think about the category of formula as having any special property. It's just information. And second, I use the tools from the five systems we've just discussed. Even while holding a live stream, applying all of them is possible in real time. The trick is to be prepared with the memory techniques in advance. So how do you do that? Well, you'll want books and courses from people who have some demonstrated record of accomplishing what you want for yourself. Then practice what they teach you after developing your own systems. When it comes to formulas themselves, I'll repeat my warning from before to help make sure it sticks. Take care that you're memorizing formulas you need and make sure they're correct. And don't fret about how long these skills will take. Simply understand that developing the five systems does not need to take longer than a week. Get the free course on my site to start mastering the memory palace component at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. Then put the time aside and make it happen because mastering these techniques will give you a competitive edge. The small amount of time you spend in the beginning will reward you with mountains of free time in the end. I found this to be true during grad school myself when I wrote three novels while studying very challenging material. Now speaking of challenge, pop your most challenging formulas into the discussion area and let me know that you're on board and are committed to becoming more than a master of memory. Commit to becoming a magnetic warrior of the mind. And if you want another example of how to memorize a formula, I don't know if it's correct or not, but how to memorize a textbook shows you a realistic way to deal with entire books. And I encourage you to watch that video next.